Good morning. I've been trying to make this video for a few days. I um, wanted to talk about, you know, like how our system is like a crystal. It's a, a liquid crystal. And our, um, you know, our body acts like a, it acts like a transmitting and receiving device. And I was trying to think of the best way to explain all of it. Maybe because I don't not understand 100% myself, but you know, just just like the blood circulating through your system, I mean, it's a it's a saline substance. It's it's not it's not neutral. It has a charge. And um, for example, there's a concept in um, medicine. We had to learn it in respiratory school. It's called the oxy, o oxygen hemoglobin curve. And what it basically says is that as your blood becomes more acidic, it will not hold on to oxygen as readily. And it will uptake carbon dioxide easier. So as blood moves to the tissues where the, the pH is lower, it's more acidic in the tissues because your body's using metabolism, and so it's producing waste products and carbon dioxide is one of the waste products as the blood moves there the the amazing i mean it's so amazing that the hemoglobin molecule changes shape and when it changes shape it throws the oxygen off basically so that it can diffuse into the cells because the cells are suddenly you know they're they're basically absorbing oxygen so they can continue living and this the carbon dioxide that's being released from the cells is being pulled into the hemoglobin molecule or onto the hemoglobin molecule so it can carry it back to the lungs as it moves back to the lungs the capillary beds in the lung tissue in the that surround the alveoli in the lung which is the the unit of respiration is the alveoli. That's uh, where everything happens. And it, the, the oxygen diffuses, the carbon dioxide diffuses out. The, the molecule changes shape again, in other words. So it holds onto the oxygen and lets go of the carbon dioxide. So the oxygen is pulled onto it. it it's like an osmosis that's occurring in real time. So, I mean, this is happening at a speed that, I mean, it's hard to even comprehend. I mean, it's, and it's happening all through our whole system. And so what, I, what, what I'm trying to get at is, this is just an example. So the cells themselves are constantly exchanging these positive and negative charged, you know, ions, these, you know, um, salt ions, chloride ions, um, bicarb ions, carbon dioxide, molecules, oxygen molecules, these things are being constantly shifted back and forth. It's creating a homeostasis in the system in real time. So this is happening um, so, so rapidly and so, um, it's, it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, totally amazing. But what it, what it is, is the system, our, our living organism, our human body, is a crystal. And it is receiving and transmitting and receiving and transmitting. This, this, um, this osmotic state is also created in meditation. So you are creating a state of receptivity in meditation to this godly energy that's coming in all the time. So it's, it's, it's like the blood flowing through the system. You know, when, you're, when, you're, when your muscles are in a state of just neutrality where you're not doing anything there's not going to be this heavy exchange it's just going to be a light a light flushing a light um uh, a light exchange of gases right just to maintain but when you work out you go lift weights or you do whatever there's a heavy exchange occurring you know your rate heart rate goes up your respiratory rate goes up everything starts to speed up well this is what happens with meditation is you're creating a state of osmosis you're creating this, um, it's an effortless 
it's not like exercising that you're doing something, but you're actually creating this osmotic shift in your system. And you're allowing this godly energy, this in, in heartfulness is called pranahuti, this pranahuti energy to flow into you by becoming receptive to it. And then it changes your, basically your, um, this interface between spirit and material is shifted ever so slightly. And that's why we start to feel more light and more um, buoyant. You might even feel like happiness. I don't like to attach emotions to stuff too much because emotions are so ephemeral, but um, y you might feel a lightness. You might feel, you can feel this transmission occurring. And, and as you start to become more adept at meditating you start to step back from it and today I had a just a thought about how you know non-attachment it's the key is non-attachment and the way you develop this non-attachment is through this just becoming aware of this osmotic shift you don't have to do anything you just you just become aware of it I mean it's occurring anyway and it will take care of you but when you start attaching stuff when you start becoming attached to different things, it slows this process down. And um, basically, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to get at. Um, I was listening to um, Allison Coe. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to her. She's a hypnosis person. She does the, uh, she actually does this hypnosis. Uh, Dolores Cannon started this hypnosis and um, I can't remember the name of it right now. Anyway, I was really curious. I was actually going to try to do it too, and I just never got around to it because of my life circumstances. But um, she regresses people into like past lives, and not just past lives, but like in between lives. And uh, a lot of these people were talking about. She had four examples. I'll, I'll try to link it. Um, it's an it's a good talk. Uh, she had four examples of people that basically had similar experiences where they they were on a spaceship and they were being shown how intricate um basically intricate in, intricate the whole um the whole process of this ascension process we're in and this event and all this stuff people have been talking about for a while and showing how intricate the whole process is and how it's so multi-layered and it's not just it's not it's not the same for everyone and it's um it's basically just like spiritual path it's an individual thing almost there's going to be some people that are going to be according to this and like i said i take this stuff with a grain of salt because i'm more interested in the experience of, of um, growing in in god and, and opening my heart i'm not concerned with extraterrestrials and going on spaceships right now but a lot of people want that, you know, they want that escapism kind of thing going on that that, um, that I see with a lot of this new agey type stuff. But anyway, um, what she's saying is that these these people were all basically corroborating each other by, by saying that they were going to, you know, um, either go on to spaceships some people will stay some people will go on spaceships but when this when this event happens when this light energy hits the planet whatever whatever that means i'm not sure what that means but um it, i think it's godly energy that's going to be released onto the planet because we've been we've been held in darkness for a long time and when that happens it's going to give some people such a jolt that they have to leave. They have to go on to ships. They have to be basically the stuff that we're learning through. Um, basic for me, it's it's uh, stuff I've already known, but a lot of the confirmation has come in the last you know three or four years um, with Trump being president. It's shown just how dark and sinister this um, deep state is. This cabal, whatever you want to call it, this controlling system. And um, so basically people aren't going to be able to handle this truth and they're going to have to go to a spaceship and, you know, and, and be slowly reintegrated back into society and then they can be brought back, be brought back here or they can go somewhere else. And, um, and, and this does kind of corroborate with a lot of what I have heard. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not 
promoting this idea or anything because I really have no attachment to it whatsoever. I don't care. Um, I live in the real world that I live in, and I'm trying to, you know, provide for my family and grow spiritually and, and heal my body. And I don't care about spaceships and extraterrestrials and all that. I used to. I used to think that was real important. But now for me, it's it's more about a direct connection to God. All that stuff is ancillary, you know. It'd be like meeting some... Uh, rich cousins or something, you know, that you didn't know you had. It'd be cool, but I'm not planning my life around it. Anyway, I hope you all have a good day.